An old salt swaggers in with a ship's wheel sticking out of his pants. It's driving him nuts. New Swabby be asking a first mate. Do galleys like this be sinking often? Usually it's just the ones. Uh, even Ishii knows that one. Oh, gods, lass, you be no fun at all. Oi, Cap! There he be! There be Romoro! Sure is my ass be blue! I wish you'd not come, my lad. Pleased though I be to see you. Even Aldi's anarchists spare no mercy for mutineers. Aye, but you, a traitor? The very thought of it be ludicrous. Return with us. I'll be protecting you, and we'll be seeing your fair judging. I can't, Blue. Much as I loathe to leave. I'm dead to these waters, and they to me. Break more biscuits and call me Swabby. You've gone addled in your dotage, ain't you? Captain, unsheave that silvered tongue of yours, and talk some damn sense into this old sort. I... Couldn't bear to remain, sheltered or no. It's a hopeless feeling, bearing witness to the slow decline of something I once held such pride in. There's still be pride to be had. Honor, too. Things be changing, sure as shit. But you can't thread them narrows if you ain't even at the wheel. I hope I'm wrong, if only for your sake. I don't think the Principe can survive as is. And I can't watch something I devoted my life to sink into ruin. The Principi have changed, and not for the better. Once, we aligned behind a common purpose. Now, we fractured into two extremes, each wallowing in its own corruption. My crew... Those few souls who followed me from the Sorcerer and I set sail for lands west. The Reach, perhaps, or the Living Lands. Perhaps we'll run trade from Edir or Valia. Wherever fortune leads. But that be the far fucking side of Aeora. Ach, a journey and a half, to be certain. I've not heard every charge against me, but that of mutiny... Of that charge, I bear guilt. Why? The sorcerer were our own in kin. We're our cock-swelling pride. And you bartered it to an half-drowned old elf for a pint bilge fucking clipper. Fourteen years I spent swabbing them decks. Longer yet for you. Captain Bastion trusted you. I trusted you. Fuck. Bonai Miko. Sientere, Seraphim. I've disappointed you. Hurt you. No words can justify my actions. I only hope you believe me that I did what needed doing. How can I? How did you? Captain Bastian. Had the sorcerer slaving. Slaving? What kind of fathom headed horn swoggle be this? The sorcerer were my kin. They weren't slaving. I hunted slavers for the captain. We freed slaves together. So I also believed. But Bastian sold those we saved to the Crookspur slavers. I found records of it in his quarters almost a decade's worth. When I confronted him, it went poorly.
Siente, bon amico. Forgive me. I meant you not to know. To keep your faith in our traditions. To remain optimistic. A bright star within the Principi. Cut him loose, Cam. Aye, he did the dead fire a fine turn by sinking them slavers. But among the Consuelo, mutiny means death. But Guanfera, no. Agrasima, watcher. The clipper will be loaded soon, and then we'll be away. Cores, Seraphin. Bon amico. Take this. May you have rare cause to use it. I hope we meet again someday on calmer seas. Caress, Bonamico. Ahoy, Captain. Uh, Fucker bends your ear a moment. Uh, I'll be aiming to thank you for bringing me aboard. You run a tight shop, and you ain't no terrible person, either. It'd be a welcome change from the gentleman of leisure. I've a gift for you. This trinket be from one of the first ships I hunted. Malnage would have snatched it had I not found the perfect hiding spot. I know were I to tell you that, you mightn't want it no more. <laughs> Just a jest, Cap. Nay, I tucked it away in my beard. Didn't wear braids back then, so my hair caught about everything from feathers to fish bones. Malnar shook me down for plunder after each raid. I figured out she wouldn't go nowhere near my beard. Said my face were like a saw rip fetish. Don't rightly know for sure, Cap. Thought at first she wanted me. Lasses be that way sometimes, treating you worse the more they fancy you. Given she tried to get me killed twice within our first fortnight together, I thought mayhap she were in deepest love. Didn't fancy her in the least, but a man has needs. And I figured at the time that she were as wet as any other lass. Figured I'd give her a whisper about what we might get down to in the old. Her answer were an unequivocal no made with a uh, sharpness. Might have been the closest I've ever been to death. You be entirely welcome. Now, if you'll pardon me, I've round about reached my limit for sentiment. You be boring a hole in me with them eyes, Cap. I'd offer an oval for your thoughts, but uh, I prefer not to make deals I ain't got no intention to keep. I'd be fine, actually. Strange though it be. I'm not sure there'd be much to say, Captain. Oh, Cap, didn't feel at all good. What brilliant you are. Uh, sorry about that. Weren't fair to you. Aye. Oh, suppose we take our victories where we'll be finding them.
Funny seeing you here, Captain. Especially since we've tracked Romaro to this very rock. Ain't trying to steal the bounty, are you? And blunderbulls there, stuck by your side. I have me doubts. Funny. I'd have thought a watcher would have had better instincts than siding with a known traitor. Fuck it. We'll deal with you first, then go have a little chatsy with Rimaro. No quarter, lads and lasses! Still got it. <clears throat> Already on. Them whales to dance, heave away my legendary boat. Look like you have something on your mind. That's like what he told the Glanfathans. I bet he didn't expect they'd kill him for it. Would have loved to see the look on his face. Then the Wahaki are the painted masks. They've been serving the Leaden Key's interests for 2,000 years without even knowing it. Though not, it seems, in the way Theos intended. People doing the wrong thing for the wrong reasons for thousands of years without even realizing it. <laughs> Doesn't get more Leaden Key than that. The leaf is a curious thing. Once, the Wahaki believed they were guarding themselves against the Inguitans, Theos' people. Yet over time, they became hostile toward all outsiders. Or who they'll be. 
It's not just that the Wahaki misread Theos' original message. It fundamentally changed them. They went from being a large and well-connected tribe to a much smaller one defined by isolationism. You see all the ninian I suffer from this lad? Right short tears rattling all around in his noggin. You know me too well. I've been chasing the leaden key, trying to undo the harm they've caused. But what if I'm only making matters worse? Might I be to blame? Have I made a grievous mistake in getting involved? I suppose that's true. It's an intimidating thought, but a heartening one too. Perhaps it was naive to think I could dismantle a 2,000-year-old organization in a single lifetime. But it's worth it to try. Indeed not. I've got Isselmir for that. The strange thing is, this whole ordeal has given me some sympathy for Theos. Not that I condone his actions, of course. But I can't imagine he thought he'd destroy an entire generation either. Not in the beginning, anyway. What I mean to say is, he thought he was doing the right thing. Even at the end. A prudent suggestion. At any rate, it will be a relief to move forward. It was always too comfortable to leave the hard decisions to others. To simply follow along. I only wonder now what sort of decision you'll have to make when we finally confront Aethys. Anyway, thank you. This has lifted a great burden from my shoulders. Yes? Not a problem. Watch out. Someone in my sights. Right between the eyes. Yeah! This is futile! Death to our enemies!
What have we here? Already on it. Got something over here. Not a problem. Watcher, ask them if they got a model depicting hail. Watched you die, crushed under that castle. Your monument to hubris. Hey, it's our little skull. Oh, we thought we'd lost you. You've grown so much. A whole body now. Silence! I've suffered several lifetimes worth of your inane battle already. Again you interrupt my plans, and again I am forced to compensate. Whatever luck or intervention wrested you away from the beyond, I'll venture that it has limits. My days of bouncing in your shadow or being jostled among spears and daggers are over. This is the end of our sordid companionship. Let's not fight. We just want our little skull back. The rest you can keep. You will keep your hands away from me, Kerr. Whatever beginner's luck won you the day at Cragholt has expired. Fate brought us here to correct its error. One such offense was inexcusable. Your very presence, an abomination. Rather cocky for a man with no... skin. Then I'll borrow some of yours. Describe a spell that shrinks ears. Ah, yes. How could I forget your brooding silence, the signature of all great minds? If the Circle sent you to interrupt my research, I'll fashion a scarecrow of your remains to deter their next hapless victim. I'm sure that pig-headed Commander Balerin is having a chuckle over the irony from whichever spoke of the great wheel he calls home. 
The Bannermen are loyal to a full purse. And my investments have paid off over several lifetimes. I had planned on taking vengeance by leveling your castle. But that sea-striding Ardra buffoon stole the opportunity out from under me. From there, it was the trivial work of dragging myself across the Deerwood toward a dock. One mouthful of soil at a time. Then, I arrived in the Deadfire as any simpleton would, by boat. That arcane upstart Bekana might not have been as unhinged as we once assumed. The Circle discounted her theories about a deep well of power in the dead fire. All that changed when I felt its pulse. Your presence tells me that the Circle has felt it too. How astute! Now if you're finished dissecting my academic setbacks, I am a rather busy lick. as a pond. Look like you could use some fresh air.
If I don't survive our adventures, promise me you'll burn all my books.
after spending so much time with Kana, I'm surprised. You're nothing like him. Guess poetry just has that effect on me. Well, you could certainly do worse when it comes to family. Thanks. My gratitude pouch is as empty as my belly, I say. You could have done that from afar, I say. Step back, all of you. You've all got the wrong idea. I'm waiting for a shipment of sailcloth from the homeland. Is that going to be a problem? Then what say you about this? Coded gibberish, or I'm an Orlin. Damn it. He's about two seconds away from starting a brawl. I've got to step in. One against a mob isn't exactly even. Ever heard of a fair fight? warships blow our canoes to splinters and you call us unfair you foreign imps are all the same as surely as sharks circle spilled blood this one has been casting an unwelcome shadow on our village we found coded documents in his quarters and he defended himself with lies outsider spy because Rawatai hungers after these isles, like a tiger lurking in the tall grass and wetting its chops. If you townies are dumb enough to go blundering into an alpha predator, you deserve what's coming to you. Who are you to speak in his defense? And who is your traitor friend who postures like she is not one of us? Harama, we will have eyes on you. Cause no trouble. I owe you thanks for that, stranger. Now here is a welcome sight. Is that little Ashiza? Hop over here, you old terror. Ishi Town. You don't know where he's been. Captain, this is Harama. We were shipmates on the Flying Buttress. That's a word for it. You could also say we were... Loyal servants of the homeland. That's enough out of you. Afraid this isn't a social visit. This comes from up high. Atsura's up to his tricks again, I see. Thank you, Maya. I've been waiting for this. Maya, why is he asking? Captain, later. I promise we can discuss it later. I guess we're done here. It's been, well, sort of like old times. In a good way. Especially seeing you coming and going again. When the dust settles, maybe we could... I'd like that. Ishii misses you something awful. Say no more. Good luck in your travels and other adventures. Ashiza, you keep your feathers clean. I need to check in with Atsura. Mind if we take a detour to the Brass Citadel? Something like that. Atsura probably wants to make sure I'm not wasting too many resources on his little errand. Nothing to worry about.
You probably have some questions about what we've been doing. We found Harama in quite a state, didn't we? It's no wonder you'd be curious about what's going on. Harama is a sociable type of guy. Getting to know people is as easy to him as breathing as to you or me. Atsura set him loose so he can get to know as many people as possible. That's one way you could put it. He's keeping an eye on Tikawara. Who comes and goes, what sorts of things they discuss. Atsura is committed to a more peaceful dead fire. But he's just one man. He needs good people to shoulder the burden with him. Only Atsura knows for sure. Harama might not even have all the facts. I certainly don't. Eh, maybe. Probably. Let's just say we're not the first people to deliver Harama a missive that looked like one thing and read like another. Truthfully? I don't know. They looked like ordinary documents to me, but I'm sure that's how Atsura wanted it. Atsura has a new code for every hour of the day. He probably has cipher keys tattooed all over his body. For what it's worth, you're doing a great thing for the dead fire. You'll see that someday. Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. How might I assist you? Wonderful, I can't wait to... Oh, is that a little fishman you've drawn? I had already set the coin aside for you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. We are getting into deeper water now so to speak. We call the islands along the east of Magran's Teeth the Burning Shoals. As you might imagine, it gets a little hot over there. Two of the islands haven't been surveyed yet. You'll want to sail northeast from the docks to reach the islands. I'll be waiting.
This is where we part ways. For the moment. Asura will want me to report in alone. Sorry, it's, it's company business. I might not be back for a few days on account of this. I'm supposed to handle this one alone. I won't ask you to come along or get involved. When I said I won't ask, what I mean is you aren't invited. This is a one woman, one bird kind of job. Yeah, I'll, I'll try not to sink the ship while I'm away. It's hardly my fault someone stored the pitch next to the lanterns. Go have fun. Chase a god, save an island. Do what you do best, Captain. My cousin at Sayuka said her work's finally continuing. Won't...
What say, Hunter? Then the gods truly did not want to Amoru to lead the Kahanga. Pity he learned the hard way. You do good work, Hunter, but the bounties have dried up. That is a spring which time always replenishes in its course, I say.